Uh, the, the art stigma in Singapore is so strong, right? That you don't think an artist can survive. And then when I was painting with some of my friends, there were some comments where parents were, were saying that, oh, well, this kind should get migrant worker to do, why they get volunteers to do it? In this episode of Journeys, I've got a chance to work with an iconic mural artist who goes by the name of Tobiato. Now this guy has found his canvas on the wildest of surfaces. Shoes, skateboards, even entire basketball courts. But this particular project is special. It involves the art studio where he first began his art making journey. And this studio has got an entire blank wall and they've invited none other than Tobiato to paint on it. Hey Toby! Hey yo, what's up? What's up man? What are you painting? So this is a mythical turtle, it's a flying turtle. The main idea that I want to convey is that um, the whimsical and fun element of creativity, right? So creativity shouldn't be something so stifling and rigid. Ah. So I wanted to do something that's, that's a bit playful, a bit whimsical and, and quite magical. La. I see. So that's how I feel about creativity when I was younger and how I feel about it now as well. Nice. So I used to be very enamored by like Chinese and Japanese art. So Tobiato is a very surface level translation from Japanese to English that translates to Tobi's art. Studio Harubi was actually the first place I was immersed in the arts. It was my first part-time job being an art teacher teaching kids how to paint. And that was, that was actually what made me decide to pursue the arts. So after 10 years, like an entire decade, I'm back here again painting a mural for them as a full-time artist. I mean, if she can paint, then probably I can also help. Of oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I mean, like, I should help a person who was, right? Must yeah, not be messed yeah. up, you're just messing up my story. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> then what made you decide to, like, go into art? Mm, because, I guess, like, doodling and drawing was always one of my hobbies. Uh. But I, as, as with, like, the Singapore situation, right, not many people would readily consider it as a career right off the bat. So same for me, la. I didn't consider it. Oh, okay. Right? So even in secondary school, I didn't have to write my names on my worksheets and homeworks because I would draw all over them and my teacher would know, okay, that, that's, that's the image, <laughs> right? I like to think that my work is a bit more accessible so people can sort of see and follow along my journey. Like, this is not an artist that's out of reach. With all the regulations in Singapore in terms of like public art, it's always a bit tricky where the client is people that live there. You step into a basketball court, you don't think twice, right? You don't think that, ooh, what's the artist trying to do with this line? You, that doesn't happen, that conversation does not happen in your head. You go in and you enjoy it. You, you like it, you like it, you don't like it, you play in another basketball court. Public art is one of the ways where art can be very accessible. People look at it, they don't second guess themselves. Which part of the painting is this? So this is the uh, actually the butt of the turtle. So this is the tail. So this is the hind leg. And then you can see here there's a there's a little rope that people can grab on. Uh -huh. And take like pictures with it so you can hold it in the like Whoa! Oh. So the thing that I always loved about doodling was that it doesn't have to make sense. There's no right or wrong. So this mirror in particular is, is quite a good embodiment of that. The lines are thick and thin, there's no correct line weight to go towards. So when kids come and paint, they say that, oh, this line a bit too thick. And I was like, that's fine, that's, that's perfectly all right. In the grand scheme of things, it looks correct. And it looks like it's meant to be. So I think that kind of no wrong answer, like everything is as it should be, is the playfulness and the and sort of the whimsical part of doodling. Level up. Level up. Level up. Level up. Guys, street art shouldn't be regulated so much. <laughs> if only I could just talk about a painting and not paint, you know? <laughs> it would be easier for me. Raffles played. Please mind the platform gap. The same vein of thought as like hustle culture, right? Like hustle hard when you're young, send it, you know? And there's nothing wrong with that, that's great. Right? I think being motivated to, to do well, having that drive, is great. 
But I always think that that has to be done within reason and as much as you can afford to. I think Singapore being so small and so saturated, we are very easily caught into the chase. If you don't get your BTO while you're in uni means you're already behind, you gotta find a girlfriend. Once you graduate, you cannot find girlfriend anymore. You only got a small pool of colleagues to pick from and then you must go to Tinder, then you got no more BTO, then you got no more money. Like me saying that is very natural because it's something that is ingrained in us, right? Being so saturated, we are forced into the mindset that we need to do well. So it feels like what makes sense is the only way to go. And so I think Singaporeans unconsciously fall into that trap. And sometimes things don't have to make sense, right? It doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. A path that deviates out might go back to the same path, it might lead to its own path that didn't make sense at the start, but makes sense like 10 years later. Yeah, so this is it lah. This is the first time I've been back since like the, the opening and the launch. So I'm, I'm glad to see it's held up. The Shake Shack project is and was one that I will remember for a very long time because that's the sixth outlet that they have in Singapore and every outlet they choose an artist to work with. When the project was confirmed, the imposter syndrome hit really hard. Like, am I really the sixth artist that should be working on this? Because Great World City used to be an amusement park, right? So the colours and the motifs are sort of bringing us back to the fun and welcoming atmosphere that was once in the amusement park. I might not be the best person for the job, and I never will be. And I think that's fine. It's hard to internalize, right? As someone that constantly feels that I have so much more to learn and to do. If I do not get imposter syndrome, means I'm overconfident. Means like, hey, I deserve this job. Um, if somebody were to go down the escalator and they looked at this painting, mm -hmm. what do you hope that this painting would tell them? Right. Mm, I guess, like the intrigue is first, uh, right? I hope that they, they see the turtle and they get inspired that things don't necessarily have to be so fast. And as they start to look at different elements as they come down the escalator, maybe the second or third time, they find something new. I, I do want to show that art can be accessible, it can be appreciated by everyone. Um, black and white, it's something that is very, very welcoming. And of course the turtle itself, that's the first thing people will notice. This mural came at a great time for me as a creative that has been like churning out and like hustling for like a year and a half. So this is a good mirror for me to take a step back, look at why I enjoy what I do and how kids just purely find joy in painting. But how was your experience? I guess painting a mural of this size and everything. You know when you're spending time just not caring about what other people think and just absorbing yourself in mm. making art for yourself? Yeah. I haven't had that feeling in a while. Right. What I wanted to do was to create an artwork that would let people know that it's okay to do things at your own pace um, and to enjoy the journey as you go along and take detours and swerve left and right just like a, how a turtle would swim in the ocean. That's why I came up with the idea of creating like a, a turtle island carrying art materials like an art utopia with different things on its art journey. Hopefully when they see the mural they get a sense that their own journey is their own and can go at their own pace and they ride their own turtle and go wherever they want to go.